Today, we're going to talk about pair trading and a tool within Thinkorswim specifically made for it. Now, for those of you unfamiliar, pair trading is a type of arbitrage that involves simultaneously buying and selling two highly correlated securities. It can be used in essentially any market, whether it be stock, ETFs, futures, or Forex, pretty much anything as long as the assets are highly correlated to one another. So basically, we're going to start by finding two assets that historically move in tandem. So for example, if we were to stick with stock for right now, I would probably expect the company's Home Depot and Lowe's to be fairly correlated since they're in the same industry. Now, if I wanted to check on that, I could do it a few different ways. And first off, we could just visually compare the two in our chart and just see if they move together. If you take a look at my chart up here in the upper left-hand corner, I currently have a Home Depot chart pulled up. So let's go ahead and overlay Lowe's by coming up here and opening up the Edit Studies menu. We're then going to come down here below and search for the study called Comparison. And that's going to actually allow us to overlay Lowe's on top of this chart. So we'll just come down below and add it by double clicking on it. Then we need to come over here to the right and actually flip that over to Lowe's because right now it just defaults to SPX. So we'll go ahead and type in L-O-W, hit enter on the keyboard. And I could actually change this over from a line chart to a bar chart or candle. And I could also change the color, but I'm fine with everything for right now. It's not that important. So to actually see it, we'll just come down here below and hit OK. And then OK one more time. So now looking right here at this chart at this purple line and just looking at it overlaying Home Depot, it really does look like over the past year they have really tended to move together. It looks like there were a couple departure points, and most recently, it looks like around early May here, Lowe's might be outperforming Home Depot. Actually, it looks like it's outperforming them quite a bit. But despite that, they do look highly correlated. It just looks like Lowe's is beating Home Depot overall. Now, besides just visually looking at the two, I could get a more accurate metric by coming up here to the upper left-hand corner where the Home Depot symbol is at. And I'm instead going to throw in the symbol for the pair. So that's going to be HD for Home Depot, dash, L-O-W for Lowe's. If we go ahead and hit enter, what we're now going to see down here below is a pairs chart for Home Depot and Lowe's. So this is now showing us the difference between those two stocks. And if I wanted to see how correlated those two were together, what we can do is come back up here to the studies menu. And since we've got a pair chart open, I don't need this comparison line anymore. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. And instead, what I'm going to search for is a study called pair correlation. So we'll just type in pair. And it looks like it's the very first one on the list here. We'll go ahead and double click on that. I'm going to go ahead and leave it set as the default. And just to actually see it, we'll come down here below and hit OK. So now that this thing has been added, what we can see here is that these two assets are highly correlated. Right now, it's showing us that the correlation between these two stocks is 0.927%, which indicates to us that these two stocks are highly correlated with one another. Now, just so you know, this value is always going to fall somewhere between negative 1 and positive 1. The closer the value is to 1, the higher the correlation. The closer it is to negative 1, the more they tend to move in an opposite direction to one another. So with Home Depot and Lowe's falling at nearly 0.93%, these two stocks are about as highly correlated as we're going to get. But now that we actually have two assets that generally move together, we're going to go ahead and look for periods when that correlation breaks down. Meaning one stock moves up while the other moves down, or just doesn't move up nearly as much. We could then do a pairs trade by buying the underperforming stock and then shorting the outperforming one. Essentially betting that the spread between the two is eventually going to converge. So you can kind of think of it like a seesaw. When one end goes up, the other goes down. However, because they're connected, they eventually find a way to balance themselves out and find a middle ground. And that's essentially the essence of pairs trading. Now, obviously, you can't do this strategy by picking any two random stocks, but instead finding the ones with strong historical correlation. So don't rush it and definitely take your time and find the perfect pair. It's also worth mentioning that these are usually short to medium term trades. So you're generally not going to hold them more than a few weeks or so. Also, this isn't the only strategy, but it is the one we're talking about today. So just keep that in mind. But now that we got the theory out of the way, let's go ahead and put this into practice with the pairs trader in Thinkorswim. To begin with, we're going to need to find the pairs trader page. And to do this, we're going to head up to the top menu bar up here and specifically click on the trade tab. And right here, you can see I've already got the pairs trader pulled up. 
Once we're here, if you look down here below, we can see two boxes right up here at the top with the two symbols that we're going to be trading. So right here it says spy on the left, and we got triple Q over here on the right. Now since we were just talking about Home Depot and Lowe's, let's go ahead and flip those over. So we'll just come up here and type in Home Depot on the left one, and then come over here to the right and then throw in Lowe's on this one. Once those are set, if you look down here below, we've got a chart of the underlying stocks just like before. So this is showing us the difference between the two underlines right here. And then right below that is the exact same pair correlation study. So just like we saw before, this is going to give us a visual representation of exactly how these two stocks have moved in relation to one another. Now another one that a lot of people like to use is the ratio between the two. So let's go ahead and add that by coming back up here to the studies icon in the upper right hand corner. We're then going to come back over here to the search box, and this one has a very similar name. We'll just start by typing in pair up here. We'll then come down below and add the pair ratio, and then hit OK to actually see it on our chart. We can now see it right below the pairs correlation, and this is basically showing us something we can already see visually on this chart up here above, but it is showing it in a slightly different way. So if we first begin by looking at this chart up here, it is showing us the difference between the Home Depot and low share prices. We can see there is a period of time in which Home Depot was outperforming lows, and I can tell that because this graph is moving upwards. Now at a certain point, it looks like Lowe's takes over and we can see this chart declining in value. So that means Lowe's has been outperforming Home Depot since technically about January, but there wasn't really a big spike in that drop until around early February, but that's where we can see a bit of a divergence occur. Now, if we were to come back down here below and look at the ratio over this past year between Lowe's and Home Depot, it looks like Home Depot is really traded around that one and a half uh, times the low share price over the past year. It wasn't until around February when we see that number start to decline. So it comes down from one and a half all the way down to the current 1.38. So if we thought that these two would eventually revert back to the mean, that essentially Home Depot would go back up and Lowe's might come back down, or at least they might converge with one another, we might decide to buy this pair essentially buying Home Depot stock while selling low stock all at the exact same time. Now, this is just a really simple explanation of what pairs trading is, so please do plenty of research before diving in. But now that we've got the basics down, how do we actually make this trade? If we come back up here to the symbol boxes, the very first thing we're going to want to do is set the number of shares for each of the contracts or shares that we want to trade. Now this is going to be done in two different ways, and to begin with, you've got the number of shares that you want as the baseline for the entire pair's trade. So for example, down here below, you can currently see I've got one in this quantity box. Meaning, if I were to actually hit buy pair, what I'm doing is buying one share Home Depot and selling one share of Lowe's. If we instead came over here and bumped this up from one to ten, now, if we come back over and hit buy pair, I'm essentially saying I want to buy 10 shares of Home Depot while shorting 10 shares of Lowe's. However, there might be times when that ratio between the two leads to wildly different underlying values. So for example, if we were to actually go out and buy 10 shares of Home Depot right now, and it looks like Home Depot is trading for 319, that's going to essentially cost us $3,200. And then on the flip side, if I were to short 10 shares of Lowe's, it looks like that's only going to be about $2,300. So it's about a $900 difference. Now we generally want those two values to be as close together as possible. So the total value of the position. And even though that nearly $1,000 difference might seem significant, it's hardly anything compared to the difference if we were trading futures. So just so you can get an idea on what it is I'm talking about, let's go ahead and pull up oil futures versus natural gas. And I've actually made this a little bit more convenient because we're not going to type in the symbols up here. I'm just going to come down here to my watch list and I've actually made a few different pairs in here. And we're going to click on the one that says CL slash NG. Coming back up here above, we can now see crude oil has been thrown in on the left hand side. We got natural gas on the right. And it's important to note that these two futures contracts have wildly different notional values. Coming over here to crude oil, you guys might not know the actual multiplier for each of these, but the multiplier for crude oil is a thousand. So this thing controls a thousand barrels of oil. Meaning right here, if we were to buy one contract at $75, that's really $75,000 of oil. Now on the other hand, if we were to look at natural gas, the multiplier for natural gas is going to be 10,000. 
So with natural gas currently trading at $2.62, that's going to be about $26,000 in natural gas. So if we left this pairs trader as is with one and one in here, and I actually came down and hit buy pair, what I'm actually doing is, is buying $75,000 of oil while only shorting $26,000 of gas. Obviously that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So what I would probably do is come over here to the right and adjust this ratio up from one to three. Now that's still not perfect. I mean, it's not gonna be exactly right, but if we were to now come down here below and actually hit buy pair, I'm now gonna be buying $75,000 of oil and I'm gonna be shorting $78,000 in natural gas. And I believe if we hit the buy pair button right here, it does actually tell us the order ticket right down here below. So right here, we can actually see the two orders that we're about to place. We're about to buy one crude oil contract and then sell three natural gas. And you can also see the buying power requirement or how much money we're gonna be tying up to do this trade right down here below. So right here, it tells us if we were to actually do this, we're gonna need $19,000 in buying power. Now, just to get an idea on what this looks like, let's just come down here below and hit send and actually place this trade. And there we go, the order just filled and I could keep track of it right down here below. If I come over here to the positions tab right at the very bottom of the screen, and now right here, we can see our crude oil position as well as the natural gas position. You can see over here at the right, I am currently down 20 bucks on crude oil. I'm not up or down anything on natural gas, but this right here is where we can see how the position is doing overall. Now, when the time eventually came to close out of this pair trade, we'll just come back up here above and then hit sell pair. And that's essentially building out the exact opposite of what we just did. And now to send it, we'll just come down here below and hit send. Now, just so you guys get a better idea on how to do that, let's go through another example. Let's come back over here to the left and flip this back over to Home Depot and Lowe's just because we actually took a pretty good look at it earlier. Coming back over here to the right, let's again say that we thought this spread was gonna narrow. And remember, Lowe's has been outperforming Home Depot recently, and it's actually been quite outperforming Home Depot. So let's say we thought that Home Depot was either gonna go up or Lowe's was gonna come back down and they were going to kind of meet in the middle. So now to do that, we would just come back up here to our actual pairs trader buttons and we could leave it at the exact ratio it is right now. I mean, we could fudge it a little bit if we wanted to try and get closer uh, to the underlying asset value, but for right now, just to keep it simple, let's just leave them both set to 10. Now again, since I think Home Depot is going to come back up and Lowe's is probably going to come back down in this situation, as the example, I'm going to come over here and hit buy pair, then hit send. But this should be enough to get you started with the basic concept of pair trading and then how to use the tool in here. Please research this much, much further before you consider doing it yourself. And if you are looking to learn more about thinkorswim or trading, consider checking out this video next. I hope you all have a great rest of your week and I'll catch you on the next one.